Yo, we're gonna bother about here today. I'm gonna be talking about how I built my Plasmax server in the Dell Optiplus 7010 USFF. So let's get straight into the video. Before I tell you how I did the uh, magnification and how, to, and how I make it, I'm gonna tell you guys my specs. That way, you guys know my Plasmax server specs and stuff like that. That way, if, if you're like me and you don't have a lot of money and you have some kind of small, small phone factor computers with you or something like that, then you guys can actually replicate what I did. So, yeah. So the CPU is an i5 3570S or 3570S. I'm, I'm about to check inside the uh, Postmax web, you know, interface. And it has four cores, eight threads, I don't remember the frequency that's inside of it. I'm, I'm gonna have to put up an Intel website in a screen that you guys can see. So, the RAM I have is I have 6 gigabytes, which is 2 sticks of RAM. One is 4 gigabytes, and one is a, a 2 gigabyte RAM. Which I know sounds kind of low, but I'm gonna be upgrading my RAM soon, so. There's no need to slam your keyboard on my, in my YouTube comments or my Discord when I'm the RAM, so yeah. So I have two Seagate hard drives, which is a 2.5 inch hard drives. Um, it's, the size is my, it's the same size as my 1 terabyte hard drive, but 500 gigabyte. And I have it in a RAID 1 configuration. Please note that, please note that RAID is not a backup. So the, the reason why I have RAID in two of the hard drives I have inside of my inside of my server is because I want some kind of redundancy. That way, if one fails, I can just go on eBay, Amazon, and buy a new, not really new, but some kind of used hard drive that has a lot of or some lifespan left, and put it inside of my Optiplus machine. And that way, hopefully, I can just get it set up again, so, yeah. So, that's really much it with the hard drive. Other than the specs, everything I told you is stock. Like, uh, like no software, magnifications, or magnifying the cooler and everything. And also, I forgot to mention that I used the uh, Sega, one Sega connector to split a adapter, that way, I can connect the two hard drives and I can use the same same data cable that I used to connect to the DVD drive and plug it to the hard drive and second of the uh, DVD. So yeah. So now I'm gonna show you guys on my GoPro, which is I don't know where's it got. But I'm gonna try to find them. There it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys in my GoPro here seven. Uh here it is. I uh, gotta clean this one. All right, so this is me behind the scenes. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I'm gonna go show you guys my GoPro. Close that and pause. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut down my Postmark server. Get my headphones down. Postmark server. And no, I do not break that monitor. Somehow, somehow when I was moving from old house to the new house, this monitor somehow got broken. So, yeah. This is my dab, dab up to plus right here. Which is, the, if you can see the light. I'm gonna turn that off. Oh, got it. Turn off. I'll be right back. Uh, so I get my silver down. My Plasmax server, not my Truna server. That I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys a video on the Truna server that I have here in, 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 in another video that I just did. And I'll be doing a home lab tour pretty soon and the software, the hardware, and all that good stuff. So, you guys are, and I'm gonna get this, get this uh, server out here Ethernet cable. Okay, gotta get my GVA connector. I got it in there in some kind of KVM system. But, I, but first, I, I gotta get a silver rack. Now I can 
to the KVM and all that good cool silver stuff. Alright, let me get this open. Let me get this out. Put it on top of my screw, screw ball. You gotta push it hard because it's just thin, forcing it up a little bit. Alright, so, yeah. Here, here's my server. Let me put the lights up that where I can let you guys know. Oh, not too much. Not too much. That's fine right here. Alright, so, let me get this front panel off. Okay, so uh, so my two six gigabytes of RAM is right here. I mean, I took my two RAM sticks right here that is in total of six gigabytes. So I have this. Uh, I don't remember which one is four gigabyte, but I'm gonna assume that the green one's four gigabyte. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. You know what? I think the blue one's four gigabyte and the blue and the two one, two gigabytes and the green one. So when it comes to the hard drives that I did. I'm gonna move this thing. I removed the DVD and I accidentally poke a hole right here because I thought I'm gonna have to run the cables up here and bend it underwards. Yeah, that, that, that does not work that way. So, yeah. I'm gonna move this. Hard, okay, so I, mo I moved the DVD thing off and I just put a hard drive right here and I double sided the. Uh, the mega part, where you, where you see the label, the how many gigabytes it is, I double sided tape that part in the bottom part of the, uh, the uh, cage right here. That way it can connect to the splitter just fine. Because if I, if I have that blue part sticking down and the mega piece is facing up, then the big power cable would interfere with that fan. So I bought this like splitter, I, I don't I don't remember when it's the time I bought it, but I had this splitter for a very long time. I think since 2020, I don't really remember, but luckily it didn't catch on fire because, not really because, uh, it doesn't really catch on fire. And that's mainly for the two hard drives. Taking up a little bit less power altogether than the regular conventional 3.5 inch. Not 3. Point, wait, what? 3.5 inch? Yeah, th yeah. The regular hard drive size. So, uh, yeah. There's no little. Um, there's no. There's not. There's not another. Uh, full size plug when it comes to the ones that connect to the DVD. So, I decided to cut that cable, which I know is really certain, that and it kind of decreases the whole selling value when it comes to selling this computer. But I'm not gonna do that because, I'm not gonna do this to this computer because after I equip my server, I'm, part, I'm most likely gonna give this to another fam family member that's willing to use this computer mainly for a web browser or some kind of Roblox game. Yeah. So, after I cut that proprietary or super small power cable out, it's mainly for small form factor computers or low profile DVD players that's inside of a lot of laptops. So, yeah. So, I have this c cable that's sticking out of the motherboard right here. And then, this down cable right here connect to the splitter. This one right here. That I made a I made a hole. Look at Oh wait. I made this hole right here bigger that I can pass through this cable. That's why I did that. And then pass it through here. I have this mega piece open so I can pass it through. Put into this uh, DVD tray. Put a hard drive on it. If I put the DVD, one of those blue things that you see, that can, that you can put it on, the, on this thing with, with that DVD thing, or the CD ROM part, it's it's not gonna work because it's gonna be a little bit over 
like it, it could be like a couple I don't know nanometers higher to the point where, the, where it's gonna interfere with that top piece when it comes to that wire so yeah so I made the holes big enough to pass through the uh, the power cables I'll move this here and on the data cable is just like what it is before I used the same data cable like, on this hard drive as it is on the DVD on the CD DVD thing and somehow I made it to work so I just moved this part here tuck it around this heat pipes close it up and then another modification that I did is that I do not want a lot of dust to accumulate to this computer's like in, in the short term part so I I kind of double sided tape the uh, the cover because I, I, I just couldn't find another another solution for that like yes I could buy a DVD super like some kind of laptop tray where you can add another hard drive to a laptop I could do that with this but I don't want to spend any kind of money and I just want to use the hardware that I'm having here if you don't want to make any modifications like I did and you're not very tech savvy and want to build a server for yourself whether it's for if it's for family pictures or a server that can protect you from the internet and stuff like that like a virtual machine environment like I'm having here which you know I'm I'm on I'm a huge tech nerd when it comes to all this stuff, but I know what I'm talking about here. And I'm going to be making future videos about past Mac servers and stuff like that, so, yeah. So, look, after I tuck it in, right here, like, like this. Give me a second. Maybe I can find a better way to tuck it in. Just go through Oh, yes. Go through the, through the heat sink. There we go. So I just tuck it in that last piece of wire right there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, I'm going to put this thing back in. I got to align the clips. Bam, like this. And then, since this thing is pushing it up, a little bit more because of the wires happening here, I have to put some kind of force. Let me show you guys what I mean. I gotta do this. Hold on, I gotta align it first. And add some force to it and slide it. Slide it towards the front panel. Then I'm gonna grab the screws and then put it on the back. You feel it? I don't know if you guys can see it though. And boom. That's what I did. So before, so when I turn on, I think I did it right. I, I think I did it this magnification before I get the monitor for Christmas. So I had my other monitor right now. I think I did this earlier this year, didn't I? Yeah, so I just used that old monitor behind that door and turned it on, downloaded Postmax in it. And I have my hard drive on road run because, like I said earlier, get this Ethernet cable back in. And I have this monitor right here just to monitor all my stuff that's on this Postmax server. And hopefully in the future I can get like a, some kind of PVM system or maybe some kind of splitter for this monitor I can just uh, let me get this let me get this GVA connector here I'm gonna connect my GVA con oh, shoot 
we'll connect the power as well that way. Alright. Now move this move this computer. That has three cables in it. Thankfully it did not it, it thankfully this computer doesn't even complain about the whole keyboard and mouse thing. Compared to my TuneNet server, which does have an older down motherboard. And it does complain about the keyboard and mouse thing. So I was able to disable it in the BIOS, in the TuneNet server, and it works just fine. Alright? Okay. Oh yeah, go. now it's working fine. And now I'm gonna go to the... I'm gonna go to my Plus Max server now. One, nine, two, I got him. And let's go to my, hey, here we go. We type in my, word and password. All right. It should work just fine. Uh, I'm going to check my third time machines. Everything seems to be running. No, not everything, but just my, just my Minecraft server is running. Not my Docker and the uh, other machine. I'm thinking of turning on my machine that's... That I, don't, I don't have any Pyho thing inside of it yet. But I will be, I will be downloading Pyho into this machine. For now, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna enable my Docker container machine because I don't have enough memory for it. So I have to sacrifice the Docker container for Minecraft. Um. Oh wait, maybe I should disable Minecraft and just turn on the Docker containers and stuff. I don't know. Anyways, that's pretty much it. And if you guys want to know how to get dark, dark mode on my, on my Plasmax web interface, then I'm going to probably make a YouTube show on it and not further go because it's not, it's, it's not going to be really worth anything to make a full-fledged long-term YouTube video. So, I, I think that's pretty much it. So, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video too. And also join my Discord server. That way, <clears throat> you can that way you can talk to me and my subscri subscribers and also my friends out there too. So, see you guys there. Peace.